Good morning, friends. It's the Friday Faith Philip. Senior Pastor Derek Galloway here. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm glad you joined us. And um, hold up. Yo, this is not how we get down. Hold on for a second. Hey, what's going on? It's the 15 minute faith fill up. No, it's the Friday faith fill up. We expanded this out to 30 minutes. It's Senior Pastor Derek Galloway from Metro Christian Church. We kicked it up a notch. We want to make sure that we're bringing you quality. We want to make sure we're bringing you excellence. We want to make sure we're bringing you fun. And we want to connect you to the compassion of Christ. So listen, I'm glad you stuck with us as we revamp and shift it in the second quarter. You're not going to be disappointed by all the great things going on at the Connected Christian Church. We're here today because this is our Friday Bible study. We might as well call it that because we're going to study what the Word of God says. And if you stick with us, you'll get something out of it. So listen, we're going to get into a prayer. We're going to get into a few announcements. I want to make sure you know what's coming up in the month of April. This is a great month. We're starting our Holy Week beginning on Palm Sunday, which is going to be April the 10th. And then we have our uh, Family Fun Day, which is up on the 16th, followed by Resurrection Sunday on the 17th. This is a time you don't want to miss. So right now, what I want you to do is I want you to take time to like, share, and subscribe. Get somebody in here right now because the faith fill up is going on. Let's pray and we'll be right back. Father God, we thank you right now for giving us life, health, strength, energy, for giving us purpose, giving us direction, giving us what we need at this time in order to do what thus saith the Lord. Now, Father, I ask you to have your way. Do what you want to do in the lives of your people. Let this be magnificent in your eyesight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, all right, listen, let's go ahead and get this going right now. We'll be right back after these messages. Let's go. Hey, these are the announcements for today's Friday Faith Fill Up. We've expanded our faith fill up not just to include 15 minutes, but it's a 30 minute broadcast. We're available every Friday at 7 a.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube.com. Make sure that you're like, sharing, and subscribing. Our 2022 brand new connected t shirts, brand new colorways, brand new logos, $20, all sizes in stock. Get yours and let's rock out together is our upcoming Hand in Hand Outreach, Saturday, April the 2nd at 11 a.m. We're going to start at the church and make our way to Sankofa Park. We are living our witness and connecting our community to the compassion of Christ. Palm Sunday, April 10th, 10 a.m. Blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. We're going to shout out and begin to celebrate as Holy Week kicks off in grand fashion. Easter weekend and Sunday service, we're going to start on April the 15th, and we're going to go for three days, y'all, from Good Friday to Resurrection Sunday, and we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to start off on Good Friday, remembering what Jesus went through, the passion of the Christ. We're going to get more information for you, and we want you to join us in whatever we do. We have a book signing coming up. Saturday, April 16th, between 12 and 1.30 p.m., 107 East Beard, the book Greater Focus, available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com, but signed copies will be available directly on site. Our 2022 Easter Family Fun Day, Saturday, April 16th, from 2 until 5 p.m. This is sponsored by Molina Healthcare. Bring the entire family, bring everybody you know, and let's have fun. Resurrection Sunday, April 17th, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's an hour of power that you don't want to miss. Make sure your feet are under the seat. And that Sunday, what we want to do is we want to make sure you're joining us in person. And that's for powerful faith teaching every Sunday, 10.05, live and virtual that we're in Acts the first chapter but in Acts the second chapter is the infilling and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit amen now I need you to understand this I need you to catch this right now you can't have an Acts 2 without an Acts 1 not only is it numerically correct it's theologically correct and it's biblically correct because unless you're prepared consecrated and in a spirit of expectation you will receive the power that comes and thus the Holy Spirit as prophesied in chapter in verse number 8 
So if you're looking for an Acts 2 experience, you need to have an Acts 1 preparation. Hey, what's up? It's time for the Friday Faith Fill Up. We are back. I'm super excited you decided to come back with us. Uh, hey, listen, I like to have fun. Hopefully you enjoy that intro. Uh, it's something that we really, you know, as we look at it, you know, our faith is serious. Our faith is serious. But well, one of the things that we have to begin to look at is we can't be so uh, stuck on tradition and, you know, not laughing, not having a good time. You know, so I figured I want to do something a little bit different. So listen, we're going to get into our lesson. If you're following along on our faithlife.com website, which is Get Connected SYR, you'll know that today, today we're looking at uh, Matthew the 11th chapter. Now, uh, they give you two verses, which is going to be Matthew the 11th chapter, verses 25 through 26. I want to take it all the way down from 25 to 30. Before we do that, let's pray and let's give God our best uh, before we go into the Word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for another opportunity at life, at study, to be able to show ourselves workmen being not ashamed of the gospel. Father, let us be shown as approved. Let us be able to rightly divide the Word of Truth in such a way that it reaches those that would receive clearly. Now, Father, we ask that you allow me to decrease, that the power of your word would increase, that the lesson that's going forth would resonate in the hearts and in the ears of those who it's designed for. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you'll see this. It says uh, in verse number 25 of Matthew, the 11th chapter, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. I want to make it as simple as possible for you. It says, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal them. Come to me, verse 28, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So saints, listen, what I wanna share with you today is recognizing that Jesus has declared if you come unto him, he will give you rest. What a fitting way to end the week this week, knowing that Jesus is going to give you rest. Many of you have endured all manner of trial and tribulation, all manner of hardship, and all manner of trial. But I'm here to tell you today that Christ will give you rest. He'll be able to take your, your ashes and exchange them for beauty. He'll be able to give you what is pleasing unto him. And when you begin to look at it, you begin to learn that these declarative statements that the Christ makes are put in such a way that you who would receive it would be able to understand it. Now, let's look at this. He declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and the understanding. One of the things that we have to look at is Jesus did not come for those that already thought they knew everything already thought they had everything, already thought they were entitled to everything. He came for those of us that recognized him as the Christos, as the Messiah, that needed a restoration, that needed reconnection. The Bible says, and the, the, uh, in the commentary, it says Jesus emphasizes the humility and dependence on those, uh, of those that receive his message. When you look at it, when you think you know everything and you're unteachable, that means that you're unreachable. I'm so glad to recognize that I don't know everything. I'm happy to know that I don't know everything and that the things that I do know, I'm able to share, but it's not through my wisdom or my understanding. Christ says that I'm excited that you've hidden these things from the wise and the understanding. And the reason why it's important to know that they were hidden 
Because again, if you're unteachable, you're unreachable. You're unreachable. You have to be in a position where you realize that God is putting people in your place that can help get you to the next dimension of your life. We're not just looking at new seasons. We're looking at new dimensions. We're not just looking at new blessings. We're looking at, looking at new levels of life. In this particular dispensation, we're no longer worrying about whether or not, oh God, just bless me with a car. We're asking God to bless us with a mindset of entrepreneurship that if transportation is your worry, transportation becomes your goal. And when you begin to look at everything that God is doing, He's doing it in such a way that those who already think they have a plan carved out that are trying to do all of these things and, and, and say, I'm chasing the bag and I'm showing you how to do this and that and I'm showing you how to scam and how to get over. Those individuals are not who Christ is, is revealing himself to. He's revealing himself to the person that has a sense of humility, that knows how to remain humble, that knows how to look to him for strength. The Bible says, I will look towards the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And if you realize that everything that you do, from waking up this morning, to going to bed last night, to taking care of your family, to balancing your finances, all comes from the Lord, then you're in a good position. You're being told to remain humble and dependent on Him. There's so many people that think that they've done everything on their own. And I'm here to tell you that you've done nothing on your own. Everything you've done has come from God. Let's look a little bit further. It says that, yes, Father, for this was your gracious will. The will of God is to recognize that the people of God need God more than God needs them. Let me explain. When you begin to look at your life and you realize that it was not by your strength or by your might, that it was not by your wisdom or your intellect, it was not about your bank account, but you were dependent on God for your very existence. God begins to reveal to you through his son Christ Jesus that you're in the best possible position you could ever be in. And when you begin to look at this, it was his will that those that would would be able to receive and as you receive, you'd be able to move forward. Verse 27 says, all things have been handed over to me by my father. And no one knows the Son except for the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, except the, and, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. Whomever the Christ, whoever Jesus revealed God to, in his purest essence, in his purest form, not what we see with this giant man standing on the ends of the earth, you know, with a, a gray beard and, and flowing robes. That's an incarnation that people have passed down generationally based off of Greek and Roman uh, pantheistic or, my, uh, or multi-theistic beliefs of Zeus and of uh, uh, Zeus and whomever else they worship. But the true measure of God is immeasurable in our minds. We got to move beyond thinking that we can compartmentalize what God is, who God is, how God is, because as far as the East is from the West, that's how far the understanding of is of what God is from what our finite minds can wrap around. Nobody knows the Father except the Son. And why? Because Jesus was the Father wrapped in flesh, sent down 42 generations, as we used to say in the Baptist church, to be born in a manger, born of a virgin, to go through his entire life, and who, who, he who knew no sin became the ultimate sacrifice of sin. He became wrapped in sin and nailed to the cross for our sins. This is where we have to begin to look at it. No one else could have endured that. Nobody else could have walked in such a way, circumspectly, not dipping into sin. Because the Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So when you begin to look at what David said, when he said, tells you that he was born in sin, it meant that his nature was one that was born in sin, but he was still yet designed after the image of God. He was shaped in iniquity, meaning those who had visited their sins upon him and passed down generational curses. Oh my God, that's a whole other lesson that we have to begin to look at. When we begin to talk about generational curses and how we break them, these generational curses do not come from us being able to do all of this on our own. Generational curses are broken by actually depending on God to remove 
what iniquity may have been passed down to you generationally, what Big Mama and them did, what your uncles and them did. These generational curses need to be broken in order for you to get to the maximum level of your life. In order for you to get to the next dimension, the dimensional, uh, the dimensional barrier rests in your ability to break generational curses. So here's the thing that I have to have you look at. Your dependence on Jesus to get to know the Father is the prerequisite to you desiring to break your generational curse. I'm talking to somebody right now, and I don't know why, but specifically, you have a generational curse that's been placed on your life. And as you begin to go through your life, you'll try to divvy up different things. You'll try to maneuver to the left or shift over to the right, but your generational curse, your time-tested trauma is resonating inside of you. And as you begin to respond from your time-tested trauma, your generational curse and your barriers that you've experienced passed down through families and passed down through friends and, and life situations, you have to get back to understanding that you need to become humble and you need to become dependent on Jesus to get to the Father. Because here's the thing, nobody knows the Son except the Father, but also nobody knows the Father except the Son. And the Son knows Him, and because He is Him, as we've already explained, and whomever the Son decides to share the Father with, However you begin to look at the sanctity of the relationship that Christ had, and however you look at how you deal with your relationship, however you balance your life out, it's important to note that when Jesus reveals the Father to you, that's when your life gets better. But you can only get that by be remaining humble and by becoming dependent. You become dependent on Him. Now here's the thing, sometimes that gets a little troubling. And it seems like you can't do that. It seems like as you would try to work through everything, it gets harder and harder and harder. Can I tell you a secret? Life is not only not fair, but life is also hard. Living this life day by day, you're going to run into a lot of things that are going to cause anxiety. You're going to run into a lot of things that may depress you. You're going to run into things you may not seem to understand. But I'm here to tell you on this morning, this wonderful Friday morning, on this Friday faith fill-up, that if you trust in God and lean not to your own understanding, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go unto the Lord. He says in verse 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Meaning that burden, and we said this right at the altar on Sunday, if you don't have a church home, we need you to be in a place with us at 10 a.m., 10.05 a.m. Uh, on our broadcast at 107 East Beard between State and Salina in the beautiful city of Syracuse. We talked about this and we did some burden releases at the altar on Sunday. So what I'm explaining to you is that the Bible tells you to come to me all who labor. If you're working in this life, you're going to get tired of this life. And if you're heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. What does that mean? That means that God is going to relieve you of your burden. He's going to take it unto him. And he's going to give you an opportunity to take a break. Now, understand that you don't have to wait for the sweet by and by. God can make your life easier today. If you give to him what you're struggling with. If you hand it over to him to pick it back up no more. That's where you begin to look at your life and say, God gave me rest. When you begin to look in the Bible, there are so many times where God talks about giving you rest. As a matter of fact, in the 23rd division of Psalm, and you begin to look at it, he tells you, this is a Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his namesake. Now when you begin to look at this, he leads you beside the still waters, but he also causes you to lie down in green pastures. Why would you lie down in green pastures? Because green pastures are also, not only are they a place of provision that we begin to look at, but they're also a place of rest. Peaceful rest, slumber, restoration. So when we look at it, he says, I'll give you rest. And now here's the thing. You've been going at it by yourself this entire time, but let's look at what he says in verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. I'm gentle and lowly at heart. But here's the thing I need you to figure out. You don't have to go with this alone. Verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. Understand that Jesus knew who he was talking to. And when he went through life, he spoke at a level where those that needed to understand could. And one of the things they needed to understand was at an agrarian or an agricultural level. So when we talk about yoke, they would put two oxen together and those oxen would be normally bound together by a wooden harness known as a yoke. Thereby, as they began to plow the field, two oxen are better than one, three oxen are better than two. But each one had the responsibility of plowing under their own power. Now, if we're partnered and yoked with God, if he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, you have to understand that that yoke, you don't have to do this by yourself. Having the yoke with Christ, you don't have to go it alone. If you had to go it alone, you would get tired and you would give up. I understand many of us have already given up and, and said that, well, this can't be life. I'd rather go about it a different way, but I need you to hear me clearly. Come a little bit closer, come a little bit closer, that when you look at your life, Having relationship with God is worth it. Having relationship with God through the Son is worth it. It's not going to be easy, but it will be easier because he says, take my yoke because I'm gentle and lowly at heart. You're going to find rest for your soul. If you find rest for your soul, the blessing behind it is he will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Part of your problem that you go through life is the fact that as you're experiencing things, you don't understand what's going on. It becomes overwhelming and it becomes so much of a stress that you decide and desire just to give up. Oh my goodness, the spirit of giving up is so heavy in the body of Christ right now because we've experienced two and a half years of a global pandemic that we've never experienced, not in our lifetimes. The last time there was such a pandemic was in 1919, and here we are getting to 2019, a hundred years later. So many of the people who experienced the pandemic of, of 1919 didn't live to be able to see it. This was our watershed moment. This was our defining juncture in time. So a lot of times when you look at it, your soul has become burdened. You're tired of Zoom meetings, you're tired of WebEx, you're tired of at-home teaching. You never desired to be a teacher, but here we are over the past two and a half years living in a hybrid society, teaching our children lessons that we haven't seen, some of us 20, some of us 30, some of us 40 years because we've been pushed. And what that does is it takes a toll on our souls. Verse 29 says, you'll find rest for your souls. You'll find rest. Yokes, when you look at it, are heavy. The wooden crossbars, they connect them together, but understand that allegiance to him and his kingdom results in a sense of peace. It's not laborious, but it's like keeping the requirements of the leaders, it's joyful. It's joyful. So we look at it, verse 30, and we're coming in here for the home stretch. I thank you, you've been with me all this time. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In contrast to the burdens imposed uh, in the Bible, under the Levitical law, you had 619, 639 rather, uh, mitzvah or good deeds and bad deeds that you had to live your life by. There were requirements around dietary laws, there were requirements around dress. I'm so glad I serve a God that gives me the freedom to be exactly who I am who he created me to be, how he created me, however I dress, however I walk, and however I talk. God is still pleased with me because when I'm yoked with him, when I'm connected to him, when I look at the blessings of the Lord and we get everything in order, I can truly say that I am blessed. Dude, this has been your Friday Faith for Love. Senior Pastor Derek Galloway, again, be mindful of all the things we've talked about on our announcements. We've talked about our Family Fun Day. 
This is going to be an awesome time. Focus, which is a branch of the Syracuse Fire Department, is going to be there with fire prevention information, with fire apparatus. It's a great time for the kids. We have vendors that have food. We have vendors that have merchandise. We have vendors in general that are willing to come and share with you their goods and their wares. So we want you to be a part of it. You don't have to be a member of the Connected Church in order to experience the blessings the Connected Church has for you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, recognize that God wants you back. He wants to redeem you. He wants to restore you. If it were not so, Jesus would not have said, become yoked with the Father. Being yoked with the Father gives you strength. It gives you energy. And ultimately, it gives you peace. So we're going to pray. Again, I hope you enjoyed this expanded faith fill up. Every Friday, we have new content coming in. We just have a great time planned out. Again, if you don't have a church home or you are looking for somewhere to worship at, we're located at 107 East Beard between State and Salina in the beautiful city of Syracuse. Why do I call it beautiful? Because you're here. God doesn't make any junk. So this is a beautiful, blessed place. You declare those things as though they are already present in this dimension. Whatever you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. And whatever you loose in heaven, you loose on earth. So we lose prosperity. We lose good health. We lose presence of mind. And we lose the blessings of God. Let's pray and let's go on about our day. Somebody got to get the babies on the bus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yet again for our ability to do. Our ability to be. And our nature to receive. Now, Father, we receive what's gone forth. We receive your word. We receive your glory. We receive your anointing. Father, continue to bless as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. That's it. That's our Friday Faith Fill Up. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe this video to somebody that's never seen it before. Or maybe you just knew that somebody needs to hear this. Why don't you pass this on? All right? Senior Pastor Derek Galloway. I'll see you Saturday morning for our cleanup at, and our uh, distribution at San Cobra Park. Uh, or I'll see you on Sunday. Let's start off right and go from there. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Peace.